This is lesson 7.8. It's subtraction with renaming. So with word problems, ignore the numbers. Just notice what they're asking you. Sometimes there's a lot of extra information. Also, can't learn math without doing it. So grab a piece of paper, pause it, try the problem, and follow along. Because just watching it doesn't really help. Uh, so Hannah, Samia, and Colleen go running on the weekends. And one weekend, uh, Colleen ran two miles. Samia ran... A certain number of miles and Hannah ran a certain number of miles. We want to know how much farther did Samia run than Hannah. So we want to focus on that piece of information. So let's circle what we need. We're talking about Samia, so we're talking about one and a fourth and we're talking about three fourths. So first step, read it to understand, then read it again to pull out your information, and then circle and underline the information that you actually need, focusing on what is the actual question? How much farther did one person run than the other? So again, like always, we're gonna model it first. Pretty soon you'll cut out the model and go straight for the math. So to model one and a fourth, um, that's like saying one and a fourth, like that. And I wanna take away three fourths, because if we're finding the difference between them, what we're saying is one and a fourth minus three fourths. Now from our last lesson, you would think, okay, well, I can just subtract my fractions. I do one minus three. But you can't do that. And don't make the mistake of doing three minus one because subtraction has to be in the correct order. So how do I, how do I do this if I have a one minus three? This is like saying, if I'm only talking about my fractions, because when we do this, we talk about fractions first and then the whole numbers. Can I take three fourths away from one fourth? I can't do that. So what do I do? Now what I have is a one fourth here and I have a three fourths here. How do I model that? Well, I know that I can rearrange this one fourth. I can rename it as four fourths. Then what I can do is then I can take away my three fourths. So this is how much Samia has and this is how much Hannah has. What is the difference right here? That's how much farther Samia ran. How much farther is that? It's two fourths. So on the model, which is a lot of extra steps, but it helps you see that when you need to subtract the fractions and you don't have enough, you're going to rename that whole into its parts. Then you are able to compare it and see, okay, what's the difference? So two fourths is the answer, but I'm not done yet because I need to simplify that. Two fourths is the same as one half. So the answer would be that Samia ran half a mile farther than Hannah. So let's try some without the model because that's really what you're going to be doing and um, make sure that you're writing it down and trying it first. So my first thought, my very first thinking is I need to do the fractions first. And I would check and I would say, can I do one minus five? No. And this part is really important to keep your work organized. If you want to write them vertically, that still shows you we're doing one minus five. And that's fine. Either way is okay. So I can't do one minus five. How do I get more into my fractions? Well, I have to borrow or I have to rename my whole amount. This whole amount is really like saying it's a three plus a one plus one seventh. That's really what this is. Then I can say, all right, I can keep my three holes. I want to rename my one as a fraction. I want to choose the denominator that matches so that I can, I can group it together. So that one becomes seven over seven plus my one over seven. Then I put them back together. What do I have? Now I have three and eight sevenths. So for a moment, I'm going to have an improper fraction with my mixed number so that I can use it in my problem. So I didn't change the value, I just renamed it. So here's my new number. Now, can I take away, now can I subtract this? So I'm gonna 
for the line right here. So it's not too confusing. And we're going to subtract the 2 and 5 sevenths. Now if I look at my fraction part, 8 minus 5, I can do that. That's 3. Now it's just like the last lesson, exactly. 8 minus 5 is 3. The denominator stays 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. I check one more time. Can I simplify it or can I, do I need to rename anything? I'm good and that's my answer. Okay, so this step here, you'll end up doing that part in your head pretty quickly, but you need to understand where do I get that from? Where am I borrowing from? So here's a couple more. Write them down, try them, come back and check the answers. So write it down first. Uh, first thought is check my fractions. Can I do 2 minus 8? Nope, so I need to rename it. So I'm going to take from this whole, instead of a 6, it's becoming a 5 plus a 1 plus a 2, 13. And I'm going to take away this step in the next part. So just understand a 5 and a 1 combined to a 6. I'm going to rewrite this one. I want it as a fraction. So it becomes 5 plus, I'm going to use my denominator to help me, 13 thirteenths plus 2 thirteenths. Now I just put it all back together and I get a 5, 15 over 13. And I, I pause there and I say, okay, now I've renamed it. Now I need to do the rest of my subtraction. So just leave this part here and do the rest of your subtraction. 3 and 8 thirteenths. Now that I have enough, I can just do, this is back to the last lesson, just plain subtraction, super fast. 15 minus 8 is 7. 13 stays the same. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Let's squeeze that in here. I don't need to regroup it or rename it or simplify it, so I'm done. Write it down and try it. I'm going to do still one extra step, and then the next one will eliminate all of the extra steps. So instead of a 6, it's going to be a 5 plus. I'm not going to write a 1 and then the rest. I'm just going to go straight for my fraction. Instead of that 1, it's going to be 9 over 9 plus 2 over 9. So what does this become here? This becomes 5 and 11 ninths. Then I just continue with my subtraction. 11 minus 5 is 6, all over 9. 5 minus 2 is 3. Double check at the end. Can I simplify? And do I need to rename it? I can simplify. These can both be divided by 3. So my final answer is 3 and 2 thirds. Okay, last one. Uh, Write it down and try it. So I check first, can I do five minus seven? No, I need to rename my first fraction. Uh, so this becomes 11. And now I'm gonna just skip that other part. I'm not gonna write 11 over 11. I'm just gonna mentally add that in. So what would it be? What's 11 plus five? That would be 16 over 11. Don't get confused with those 11s. This is the whole and there's the other part. So I'm, I'm taking out some of those steps as I get faster at knowing what the process is. Then I'm going to subtract my 2 and 7 elevenths. Now I have enough. So 16 minus 7 is 9. 11 stays the same. 11 minus 2 is 9. I do one more check. Can I simplify anything? Nope, then I am done. So I'm going to actually show you one more because this is me this method is for showing where I'm only renaming the first fraction. There's another way you can do it where you turn both of them into fractions, improper fractions, and then convert it again at the end. It's a few extra steps, but it's there if you like that method more. Okay, so this is the last one. This is where we will convert both of them into fractions. So if you know the long way, this is like saying 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and then turn all of those into 7 over 7. So in the last lesson, we, we added all of those. By now, I think you can do the shortcut because you you know the, the process. If you don't know the process, learn it and then learn the shortcut. So the shortcut is 7 times 6 is 42, and then we're going to add, so we're going to multiply these two 
and then add the top number. So it's 42, 43, 44. So we have 44 sevenths minus 2 times 7 is 14, plus 5 is 19. All of it is over 7. So that's pretty fast. If you know the shortcut, it becomes faster. Now all it is is just regular subtraction of my numerators. If you need to do the work on the side of the page, not a problem, that's fine. This is going to be 25 over seven. And then the last step, so this one is easy at the beginning, but then you have to turn it back into a mixed number at the end. So the way I think of this is, how many holes can I pull out of this? This is like saying there's seven over seven, seven over seven, seven over seven. How many of those can I take away from 25? So I could, if I wanted, write it out seven over seven and seven over, that's 14. And there's 21. And how many are left? Uh, four. So how many holes are here? One, two, and three. And what's left is four sevenths. So that's the answer. The shortcut for this is this is just division. I think seven times what gets me close to 25? Seven times three. So I know my whole number is going to be three. What is seven times three? That's 21. How far is 21 away from 25? It's four away. That's my numerator. And my denominator is 7. Okay, So if you know that shortcut, that thought process, do that thought process. If you don't, then do the few extra steps until you get to the part of knowing how the shortcut works. But don't just learn a shortcut without knowing why it's there. Because this part is really your foundation. Okay, that's the lesson. Um, make sure that you've written it down. Come back. Try anything. Try other problems. And make sure that you're remembering to rename.